Thank you very, very much. The warm, warm introduction and extraordinary video. I think that's got to be the best video I've ever had. And all of my former Princeton teammates uh, there, it just makes it really, really special. Um, first, I'd like to thank the board of directors here, of course, the Robinson family, Rachel, Della, and those of you who helped put together this terrific event. Uh, my daughter, Victoria, is here in the back, and I want to thank you for being here today. It's nice of you to take the time to be here, and many of my aerial teammates are here at another table. It was great to see on the video the discussion about my parents and their pioneering ways, and I still remember when I was a young person or sneaking down the stairs and uh, watching and seeing Reverend Jackson holding court in my mom's living room. Because my mom, is, you know, you learned to graduate from the University of Chicago in 1946 as the first African-American woman to graduate from the law school, and she was very involved in the civil rights movement. But getting to see you know, Reverend Jackson in those early days was very, very inspiring. And as many of you know, Reverend Jackson often talks about the importance of Jackie Robinson moments. And he talks about how we all know baseball became such a better sport once Jackie Robinson joined and quickly showed the world that when you brought black players onto the team, the teams were going to be better and baseball was going to be better. And we were followed by great players like Willie Mays and Hank Aaron and, of course, our own Mr. Cub in Chicago, Ernie Banks. We all understood, and Reverend Jackson talks about, our country would be much stronger and our economy would be much stronger if all the diverse talent was allowed to participate fully in our capitalist democracy. And we know that that still, unfortunately, is not the case. In Chicago, we have some very proud, proud Jackie Robinson moments that many of you know about. You know, John Johnson created Ebony and Jet and became the first African American to ever be on the Forbes 400. George Johnson created Johnson Products, you know, Afro Sheen and Ultra Sheen, and had the first uh, company listed on a major stock exchange. They were extraordinary role models for an up and coming young entrepreneur like myself. And then, of course, Kara Mosley Braun became the first African American woman to be elected as a United States Senator. And it goes without saying that Craig's brother in law became the first African American president coming from Chicago, of course, Barack Obama. So we've been very, very fortunate in our city. But as I've had the great fortune, and it was talked about during the video also, to serve on some great boards and to be in a lot of boardrooms and talk to lots of companies that we invest in, too often I find that much of the business world still looks like baseball did in 1946. In fact, the wealth and opportunity gaps have been growing larger, especially in the most lucrative parts of our economy, professional services, technology services, financial services. We allow, often in lots of nonprofits and other major institutions and anchor institutions in our communities, we'll work with black and brown people to do the catering and the construction that's very, very important and very vital to our economies, but the real wealth building opportunities still only go to white men in private equity, venture capital, hedge funds, money management, investment banking, et cetera. As I try to address these issues in boardrooms and with the business leaders of today, I'm constantly talking about Jackie Robinson. You know, our team gets tired of me talking about it, but I'm constantly reminding people in boardrooms that we need more Jackie Robinson moments. We have to get people to open up the doors in the parts of the economy where the wealth's being created today. You know, Dr. King once said that he could not see how blacks would be liberated from the crushing weight of poor education, squalid housing, and economic strangulation until he is integrated with power into every level of American life. That's so critical. Jackie Robinson understood that. Many of you know in 1964, he thought it was so important to be able to build wealth and economic freedom that he created the Freedom National Bank and became the first chairman. It's so, so important to see he, as part of his leg legacy, that he understood that the African Americans needed to fully participate in all aspects of our economy and a great bank in Harlem would be able to make all of the difference. So it's an extraordinary privilege, an extraordinary honor for me to be able to be associated with the great name of Jackie Robinson, someone I really have always looked up to for his courage and his fearlessness, and it drives all of us to fight harder for equal opportunity for all of us in our community. So thank you very much. This has really been a great evening. Thank you.